College admissions are becoming increasingly competitive, serving as an impetus for high school students to embark on more extensive endeavors. Such activities take a toll on their mental and emotional health. Thus, it has become necessary for students, in order to sustain their health and well-being, to maintain effective time management and understand that a test score does not necessarily define them. Universities have become progressively more selective, as evidenced by their declining acceptance rates. UC Berkeley accepted 27% of applicants in 2005, as opposed to just 15.3% in 2015. Notre Dame accepted 29% of applicants in 2005, versus 18.3% in 2015. At Stanford, acceptance was 4.7% in 2015, 50% being for sports, 25% for academics, and 25% through connections, making it incredibly difficult for applicants to get accepted. Student resumes are also becoming more impressive in response to this increase in selectivity. Throughout the United States, the class of 2013 achieved 1 million more passing AP scores of 3, 4, or 5 than the class of 2003. At Columbia University, the middle 50% of admitted students from the class of 2014 scored between 2100 and 2330 on the SAT out of 2400, as well as between 31 and 34 on the ACT out of 36. But it's not all about numbers. Prestigious universities like Cal and Yale both emphasize leadership qualities, extracurricular activities, service to the community, and other indications of intellect and creativity as major aspects of the admission process. Thus, students now, more than ever, feel pressure to go above and beyond in order to be accepted into their dream college. Fias Rahman is a junior at Clovis West High School. Taking on a rigorous AP course load, much of his time is devoted to studying for exams and completing a plethora of homework assignments. As a result, Fias is often forced to work late into the night in order to get all his work done, leading to struggles with getting enough sleep and getting to school on time. These behavioral patterns are common among high-achieving AP students who are willing to give up anything in order to maintain a strong academic resume. Every Sunday, Fias volunteers at a local hospital helping his community while accumulating service hours. Good morning, Michelle. Sure. Good morning. I'm just gonna take your heart rate. So breathe in, and out. Breathe in, and out. Looking good. In addition to maintaining a rigorous course load and volunteering, Fias is involved in many different extracurriculars and holds several leadership positions, including being the editor-in-chief of the Torch Literary Arts Magazine. Fayez also spends a lot of time with the instrumental music program at Clovis West, being a section leader in the marching band. So throughout high school I became involved in a lot of different activities and groups, and when I was first going in as a freshman, I didn't really realize how much of an impact it would have on me later. I was just getting my feet wet, I was just getting a feel for things. I was looking at different groups saying, what's it going to be like being in, you know, things like Science Olympiad, History Day, CSF, The Torch, and really Throughout sophomore and junior year is when it started to hit me. I started becoming leadership, getting leadership roles. I started having to put a lot more time commitment. I'd have to do a lot of outside of outside of school, outside of the activity preparation for the activity, and really it all just builds up. You don't really expect it to hit you when it does, because throughout junior year you have so many things going on. You have all these activities. You have all these AP classes. You have the SAT, ACT, all these things to work at. And you've become, you know, like I was talking about, you've become a leader in all of these groups. So you have to put in a lot more commitment. And then that's the point where you start to see a lot of students breaking down and they start getting burnt out. And the thing is, their health is what's sacrificed first. There are so many students who are, you know, so many of these AP students who are, they're not getting any sleep. They're not, they're drinking so much coffee. They're staying up through these long nights, these long periods. They're working so hard. But you start to question why. Is it really worth it to do all of these different things, all of these myriad activities, and try to be the best in every single one? 
What I feel like now, after going through the whole process myself, I feel like we should, as students, prioritize our own health and our own priorities before trying to go through all these different activities and try to please everyone. Because we're being pulled in all these different directions, but sometimes we just have to stop and say, okay, we just need some time to ourselves. In our modern world, success in higher education is often perceived as a gateway to success in the professional workforce, creating another pressure for high school students. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you need to have a college degree to be successful. There's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that are doing very well that have no college degree. But that's the exception, not the rule. And you can find those people and say, look, you don't need to go to school. But the truth is you're going to have to look long and far before you find them. They do exist. Maybe they came up with an idea, or they got connected to a job, or they knew somebody. Okay, that does happen, and sometimes you don't. But by and large, the college degree represents a piece of paper that you get, which by itself is just a piece of paper. But to this society, that piece of paper tells potential employers, corporations, agencies, the government, or whoever that does the hiring, that you know something. That you've, conver you've converted your life into a valuable skill and have skills that somebody's willing to pay time and, and money for. So the technical nature of the world is becoming such that you just can't walk in the door and get a job anymore. You have to have technical training. That's either a certificate or a degree. And certificates are technical certificates. Technical certificates you could get from like ITT or Fresno City College. Those are valuable pieces of paper too. They're technical certificates for technicians. Professional level almost always requires a degree right now. And it makes a significant difference in overall income too. The average, the average person in with, a, with a, a college degree makes something like about two to two and a half or three million dollars in their entirety life. Whereas a person with a non-technical degree might make not even a fifth or a sixth of that amount. So there's a significant difference. And when you think about cost of living and so forth and so on, and just surviving, that the whole thing starts with that important degree. Some stress can be beneficial as an encouragement for hard work, but critical stress, prominent amongst students, can represent a serious impediment to health. In a study conducted by New York University College of Nursing, 49% of surveyed private high school students reported feeling a great deal of stress daily due to grades, homework, and getting into college. The research also revealed the prevalent cycle of demands and expectations for success amongst pupils, parents, and schools as a major influence on stress levels. Episodic acute, frequently occurring stress accompanied by angst, and chronic acute, never-ending stress, are two detrimental types of stressors. These persistent forms of anxiety, such as over an upcoming exam, can very well hinder a student's ability to learn and perform. Release of the stress hormone cortisol in high concentrations can cause high blood pressure, headaches, digestive issues, erratic sleeping patterns, depression, and more health worries. Indeed, amongst several schools in Silicon Valley, stress induced by pressures to excel in a myriad of fields may have been a significant factor in the emergence of suicide clusters throughout the past couple of years. What psychological traits are associated with high achieving students? Um, I think that's a, that becomes a difficult question. And I don't know that, that we're going to find causal information with traits and high achieving. Um, we could talk about a high need for achievement, and, and individuals that have a high need for achievement like to assess their abilities often. They like to take on a challenge, and they like a challenge that's difficult but attainable so that they can measure how, it is, uh, how they are succeeding. Um, I think that, you know, in terms of personality traits, I think of things like a type A personality or type B personality, and I think kids that are involved in AP courses and in um, extracurricular activities, you're going to find both of those. They're just going to approach what they have to do in very different ways. Um, so I don't know that there's a particular trait that I would identify in 
AP students, except for that they have a high need for achievement. It's probably the, the most formidable trait that I would argue. Do the stresses associated with high school linger after a student has graduated? I think in the sense that it's going to be, again, it depends, but I think that there will be individuals who personality traits are going to linger. So characteristics of personality will stay with us. And if somebody has a high need for achievement in high school, they're going to have that same high need for achievement in college. They're going to have that same high need for achievement in their workplace. And so they're going to continually be working towards finding opportunities where they can achieve. Um, the stress itself, you know, the stress of a particular event, I think, would dissipate once high school is over. You're not going to be stressed about your APs anymore once high school is over. But I think you're going to find uh, individuals who found themselves in those situations in high school will find themselves in those situations in college, and they'll find themselves in those situations in the workplace as well. Resulting from the psychological effects of an academic overload, AP students are often more vulnerable to illness and are faced with the dire consequences of missing critical days of school. The stress associated with these situations not only affects the student, but also the student's family, who are often left with anxiety over the well-being of their child. Well, about three weeks ago, I got extremely sick, probably because of all of the academic stress that has accumulated throughout this year, and especially getting close to AP testing. And it just so turned out that that week that I got sick were my first two AP exams. So I was hoping that I would get better before my exams, but <clears throat> my sickness ended up lasting for a prolonged amount of time. So I had to miss my first two exams and also a couple of my finals that were scheduled for that week. And the following week I came back and fortunately I was able to make up the two AP tests that I missed, but I found myself missing more and more school, trying to make up all the work that I had missed for that week that it just kept getting worse and worse. And I ended up making up work up to this following pa this past week, which was about almost a month later, and I was still making up the work that I missed from that week. So I think that that really shows how the stress put on us from school and academics, it really like has an effect on our health, and missing school has such a detrimental effect that we have to find a balance to try to <clears throat> to try to um, maintain our health and our grades. So Mr. Kawakami, um, I know you're the dad of a very stellar student, Megan Kawakami. How do you think uh, parents should support their children through high school adversities? Well, it depends on the child. So some children or some students um, require a lot of hand holding, a lot of uh, encouragement. Uh, there's, it's all, it all it depends on the, on the on the child. So in some cases, some students don't study at all, and some students sometimes they they're self-driven. And so when they're when they're self-driven and they try to strive for excellence all the time, then there's then you need to kind of step back and make sure that they don't, um, you know, they have a lot of pressures of their own. How do you feel about the effects of Megan's endeavors on her health? Well, she strives to do her best um, most, most, in most cases. She may stay up all night and, uh, and then she'll sleep through dinner and things like that where it can affect her, her health. So we, we're, very, we're very concerned with that and we try not to pressure her, but I'm not really sure how we, we, we've noticed she gets uh, ill more often um, than she than she used to because of because of her um, odd sleeping habits and her her eating habits as well. So we we are concerned. Based off of your 21 years of teaching, what have you observed about high achieving students and their working habits in school? High achieving students are very motivated to do the best that they possibly can, and they do that in every area. They want to be high achieving in school, they want to be high achieving in their extracurricular activities. They know the importance 
for their future in uh, getting into the university that they desire to get into. They know the, how important it is that they do well in those things. And I have observed there's a balance and the, the really, really intelligent students learn how to find that balance and learn how to walk in that balance because a certain amount of stress actually can be a good thing because that motivates us and, and really encourages us to do the best that we can do. Would you produce if there was no stress? And really, where is the reward? It is when you're under the gun and you get something done and you are productive. That's when you feel good about what you've done. That's when you feel productive. You feel like you've accomplished something. What I've noticed about high achieving students, though, is that sometimes they can go overboard, definitely. And when they are doing robotics and math team and science Olympiad and uh, history day and all the other things <laughs> that they're involved in, and then it definitely can affect the day-to-day -day interactions in the classroom. What I've noticed with our high achieving students at Close West is that they know how to find that balance between handling stress in a healthy way and as opposed to when it overwhelms them. Because stress can be good, right? It can produce something beautiful or it can break you. And so it's being able to walk in that balance. Tackling these myriad responsibilities and commitments throughout their academic career, the students often find that one of the best ways to get things done is just to take a break and recharge. Mitigating stress can be done through various activities, from playing an instrument or a sport to simply spending time with friends. Although it may seem difficult or even wasteful to find time to relax, high achieving students discover that stepping back from their workload for even just a bit helps their minds recover from the high stress environment of their academics and activities, and will ultimately make them more productive once they decide to get back into their work. Most people think like AP students are crazy for like just putting themselves in, into that much stress. Like they think it's self-induced because uh, like even my parents didn't want me to take so many classes and like just work so hard. But um, and take college classes too. But uh, in the college like admissions climate today, like it's getting really really hard to get into these colleges. Like um, they're accepting a constant number of kids, but more people are applying, which like just dilutes down the acceptance rate to like lower and lower numbers. So you have to take, like stress is like inherent in high school now. Like you, if you're not gonna put yourself through stress, like you're not gonna get into the best college you would be able to go to. So personally how I deal with stress, like when there's a, when there's like just piles on piles of homework, like there's just so much that you can't even do an activity like just go out and swim or bike. Like I just do the homework I enjoy the most for so I'll start off with maybe math homework, then go on to physics. And then after that, I'll go on to English, because I like English too. And then history and, I don't know, other classes, like apes. But uh, senior year is actually especially funny, because um, I didn't take math or physics senior year. So I was doing classes that weren't on top of my priorities, which did add to the stress level, because you just don't want to do the work. When I think about stress, I mainly think about uh, schoolwork and obligations. Um, as a high school student, your schedule is typically very busy, um, especially, you know, you want to do everything, um, you're in, you have a lot of interests, you want to see what you're good at, what you're not, and uh, that takes a lot of time, and most of the stress comes from the lack of time. So currently I'm taking, what is it, four AP classes and two college classes, so that's uh, some of six advanced classes. Um, not to mention that most of my classes are typically a little more difficult than an average um, class. And so, you know, balancing that with my extracurriculars such as soccer, um, jazz band, debate, speech, 
it really adds up and can add a lot of pressure. And so um, one way that I uh, address this is one, by first of all, make sure I'm taking care of myself. Um, even if I am really stressed, I have a lot of work, you know, getting a good night's sleep, uh, eating healthy, um, saving time to relax with friends, whatever it takes to kind of just um, relax and get forget what I'm uh, stressing about. Um, but other than that, I mean, de-stressing can even involve like throwing yourself at your extracurricular activities, whether that's like during practice, like just, you know, going or practicing, practicing your instrument, just something that'll take your mind off of the stressors. Um, there does come a point when the stress can become too much and you need to really be the personal assessor of how much stress is too much um, because you know you don't want to burn yourself out you're in high school you want to enjoy your time but um, coming from someone like me I would definitely say challenge yourself and um, take advantage of anything you can to be able to alleviate any pressure that um, comes with that stress. Academic stress is pervasive throughout our nation, prominent among those students who are both hardworking and high achieving. As we have seen, these stresses cause both detrimental health and psychological effects on students, making it paramount for students to balance their busy schedule and activities with time for rest and relaxation. Students should understand that it's okay to miss a homework assignment, it's okay to get a B on a test, and with the support and understanding of our parents and teachers, we can progress to find that the health and well-being of our children always come first. Teacher's name, class name, date. My name, 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 teacher's name, class name. Sometimes she, she'll eat candy and things like that where we need to really make sure that's when we need to step in and... <laughs> so Frankie, what was your hard safety class this year? Me too. Wait, uh, too high, too tall. Too high, too high, too high. Oh, this is bad. Nice. <laughs> high five? Oh, yeah. Dad, I swear. 
I pull up in Lexus like it's 07. I just hit a lick, I gotta hit the next one. What a god! Action. Hi, my name's Ademi, and um... <laughs> without naming names, there may be those that don't have their homework done when they get into class or are attempting to do some other class's homework when they're in my class, which that is really rare. I know usually math is being done in all the other subjects, right? Good morning, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Good morning, Megan. I'm just going to take your, take your blood pressure. Okay, doctor. Blood pressure. <laughs> Good morning, Megan. I'm just going to take your heart pressure. <laughs> Breathe in and out. In and out. Make it fly. I wonder what it's like to be a dog. Whoa. Whoa. Be free. Well, that's a wrap. Ding.